What's up, my friends? It's Donuts and Hulk. We're back with episode two. We're going to be giving you a great breakdown today. We think it's great. We're going to highlight some of our rankings for quarterbacks, and we're going to discuss where we differentiate from the public as we are targeting our best ball drafts. Hopefully today helps you out with your best ball drafts as we are putting together a comprehensive 2023 draft kit. David and I will be hammering this out for you behind the scenes. I'm going to give you a link to that down below in the description section. It's 100% free. It's just going to be based off our experience as we've done hundreds and we'll do one, you know, one to 200 more probably throughout the rest of the summer and just give you all the info we can to get you prepared. Hulk, David, my guy, what do we got going on today at the quarterback position and how are you feeling about it? I feel pretty good at quarterback. Um, contrarian to what I'm seeing a lot of people do, I do like snagging one early. I like getting one of those top three guys, really. Um, I think there's a, a sizable gap between the top three and everybody else. So um, I think paying up for it is worth it this year. I think that you're going to have to grab one in the second round. And if you don't, then I like actually waiting for a while. Um you know, we obviously want to try to get exposure to a couple of different people. So those mid round guys like Trevor Lawrence and Justin Herbert are enticing. And I definitely want to have um, some shares of them. But I really like either either buying one of those top three guys or, or waiting a while for, you know, one of the homer picks or somebody else that can maybe just uh, kind of limp you through the weeks and hopefully the rest of your team makes up for it. Yeah, that makes sense. And I think today we're going to kind of highlight a few of these opportunities that you were just discussing as we'll have your rankings, which we just put up on the site. We're going to put this link down below as well. Again, I'm going to showcase a few things for you. We'll have the draft kit that we're making together. You know, this will all be edited. I just made this today. So name and all this, you know, things that we'll have added. Going to be pretty cool. We're actually putting together some tools for you all as we have someone working on them on the back end. It's going to be 100% free. We just want people to have fun with us. That's what this is for. It's all about our community. And we'll have a Discord channel for David and I to hang out with y'all and you know spit strategies back and forth, any research we've done uh, about the drafts and anything you want to share. We're welcome, uh, welcoming anybody in there that wants to share whatever they got. So I'm going to have my rankings here. We'll have the underdog ADP as well. And then uh, David has his here. David, let's go ahead and just fire it off, man. Let's go ahead and, you know, maybe hammer out some standout uh, strategies you have with, you know, the top several picks. And, you know, all three of them are basically going in the top 25 right now or so. I believe the only one that's not is Josh Allen. There he is at 27.7 uh, ADP wise. So just, you know, three, four picks in the third round. Uh, what are you doing at the top here? Do you have any strategy that you're making sure you you try to follow through with you when you're getting some of these top three picks? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, first we have to highlight the number one quarterback in the NFL, despite what the people from Buffalo may say, and that's Patrick Mahomes. Um, I think that he's the clear cut number one. Um, I think it's pretty much a no brainer to me. Uh, the only time I would say that I would uh, pick one of the other guys over it is for exposure purposes, or if you've already picked a stackable piece in the first round. So when your first round pick, if you pick AJ Brown and it comes back around you in the second round, I have no problem with grabbing Jalen hurts over those top two guys. Um, I love the stack there. That's probably the top stack. Um, the other one you could make an argument for would be uh, uh, Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs, or obviously Kelsey, if you want to go the tight end route with Patrick Mahomes is a great stack. But um, I think that uh, Allen has the weakest stacks, in my opinion, of all of those guys. Um, I like, lightly here, buddy. I know. I'm sorry. Uh, you'll have a chance to defend your case in a second, I promise. <laughs> but I think that uh, Patrick Mahomes, I really like stacking him with guys like Kadarius Tony late, um, Sky Moore. Uh, you have a fan favorite that you can mention. I'm not going to take your, drop uh, your one, thunder. Nugget, baby. Yeah, I won't take that. But um, I really think Mahomes has great stackable pieces. Jalen Hurts has Devontae Smith that you could get maybe in, I think, maybe three or four, round three or four. Um, you know, Dallas Goddard's not a bad stack with him. So I think those guys just have later round stacks, um, and, and just better overall stacks than Allen does. Um, you know, you could grab Knox late Kincaid, um, Gabe Davis, you know, either four touchdowns or nothing Gabe Davis. So I just like the, I, I prefer Mahomes and Hertz. Um, if you're going to stack them, 
but if you just want to get uh, one of them and not do anything, I'm totally fine with Allen. And actually, I'll be honest, I think I've taken Allen over Hertz quite a bit. And that's, so like that's really, points. yeah, that's really yeah. how I feel. I really like Mahomes or Allen as my top two, um, as my top two picks over Hertz. And the difference is small, but it's noticeable in my mind. Yeah. And it's interesting. So, you know, this wouldn't be a topic I would really want to talk about ever in the past two years. I mean, it's been like, there are very specific, you know, uh, number one, number two, number three, and here's what you're going to do. But I feel like this year it's kind of wide open. I mean, maybe Mahomes is like a, a small step ahead of the other two, but even when you're looking at these teams, it's like, it's hard to get Kelsey in the first and then turn around and still be able to get Mahomes late second or early third. It's a tough stack to put together this year. And then if you do go with Josh Allen or Jalen Hurts, I mean, you ask one analyst this question and you ask the next analyst the same question. They're going to give you multiple answers, different answers on how they're stacking with that player or who their favorite play is. And are they drafting real late targets like Richie James? Who, uh, you let me, you know, drop name drop out here uh, with Patrick Mahomes as you can get him as your 18th pick every single time. Uh, or are you trying to, you know, make sure you get the Gabe Davis and, you know, the the late uh, 70s and 80s draft pick. It's, it's, you know, I think this year is really the first time in the last several years where the top of the quarterback tier, you know, they are way ahead of the rest. And I do believe that the next tier of quarterbacks, you know, they're not just one step back, they're two steps back. And when you're looking at the top tier, though, I think they might be the hardest to stack, you know, and when you're looking at Burrow and Herbert, you know, these guys are great targets that you're getting the 45th to 50, you know, fifth round uh, pick range. And they have clear cut targets. You know exactly who you're stacking them with. It's pretty easy to get two people to stack with them. You know, I, I, but when you're looking at raw points, the upper echelon of the QB tiers, it's different. It's a, it's an interesting conversation to have this year. And I want to slide over to mine real quick, just to kind of highlight this. I am no different. I have Mahomes as the top, uh, quarterback, and I think he's actually potentially a step ahead of where Allen is. And I love my Josh Allen, my Joshy Poo. Uh, and I have him, you know, he has a step behind Mahomes, but I do have him even a little step ahead of Jalen Hurts. I think the size advantage of Allen versus Hurts uh, allows me to not have that risk for injury. And it, it, I am a little worried about Jalen Hurts and his running style, uh, maybe his frame in the open field. You know, he's he's not like small and skinny by any means. Like we've seen some of these other quarterbacks who, you know, get outside the pocket and turn it up field. Sometimes these guys are small and injury prone. And maybe someone like Lamar Jackson, who isn't really built to be running in the open field, is right now an underdog being drafted as the fourth overall quarterback. Now you have him as the fourth quarterback. I have him as the seventh. I actually slid him down there behind Burrow, Fields, and Herbert. Do you want to talk about... Uh, Lamar Jackson at four for you and why you have him ahead of Burrow and Herbert. And I'll go ahead and swing back around of why I bumped them down this year, because that's a significant drop down. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't hate your ratings at all. I can totally see we've talked off air about yeah. this a lot. Um, I totally get the concern and my thought is it's best ball. So you're going for the guy that could, put up buku points and just go crazy. And Lamar is like the epitome of that. Like he's the definition, you know, he's Mike Vick back in the early two thousands or whatever. Like he's electric. Um, every time he touches the ball, like he could score a touchdown, you know that. So I'm hoping that he can avoid the hits. I read some articles that were saying that I think they have a new offensive coordinator, but they want to throw more with him. Um, and I think he showed that when he's been healthy the last two years, like he really has, developed his accuracy and his touch. And, and then, you know, you always have that in your back pocket that he could take off and sprint down the field, 60 yards for a touchdown on any given play. So my hope is he gets back to the MVP Lamar. Um, I think he actually has the best weapons that he's had since he's been uh, with the Ravens. So I really just think that's it. Um, I mean, I love Burrow. Uh, Joe Cool's awesome. Great stackable piece. Justin Herbert, the same thing. His receivers are often banged up, but um, I mean, that's really, really the Lamar I'm hoping we get. I'm hoping we get the Lamar from the MVP season that was just unstoppable, like the human joystick. So that's yeah. really the, the main reason is just I think his ceiling is higher than Burroughs and Herbert, although 
Herbert put up a monster year, I think, two years ago. So two years ago. That's just my thought. Yeah. Yeah. We are one year removed from Justin Herbert yeah. scoring, I think, what, 395 points, something like that. It was yeah. a huge, huge year. And right now, I mean, he's down here below Fields. He's down. There he is, 395.8. Yeah. Great season. He's down there below Fields. He's down there below Burl. You know, and I've I've been kind of going back and forth. Uh, with that little trio too, because I'm not entirely sure. I love Fields. I love his upside, the rushing upside. I mean, man, he had several games there, 150 yards, a couple of rushing touchdowns. Absolutely goes berserk, uh, you know, on the ground, which is phenomenal for you know six point touchdowns. Six is better than two, uh, four. It's two points better, and he, you know he could rack up ten plus. Who knows? Um, but when we're looking at like stacking pieces, it's just so much easier stack. Herbert than it is Justin Fields. Not entirely sure that we're going to have, you know, the stacking upside with DJ Moore or Dar Darnell Mooney or uh, Cole Komet. You know, these guys are available. I don't think they're terribly hard to get, but I think a lot of the value with Justin Fields is in his legs. It's in the rushing upside. And I feel the same way about Lamar Jackson, even though they have definitely, like you had mentioned and alluded to, they've surrounded him with pass catching targets. Probably the best offense he's had surrounding him. Uh, healthy J.K. Dobbins in the backfield should really open things up as well. Now, if they force him to throw out there, does that make him a better you know, stack piece than some of these other guys? I don't know. That remains to be seen. But for me, I've dropped him down simply due to injury concern. And I probably should maybe even look at moving Herbert above Justin Fields for the same reason. And, you know, again, two years removed from basically the same – exact type of season as we got out of this first tier that you and I had talked about mm -hmm. is available down here. And, you know, right now on underdog, he's available as the seventh quarterback. Now, you know, I don't know what you think about the next tier, but I think there's a precipitous drop off in upside and floor when we get past Herbert. You know, I do like Lawrence. I do think there's a lot of upside there, but I think the floor I mean, we're talking 250 points. It could be the potential floor if things don't go well out there in Jacksonville this year. And on the flip side, you've got a 400-point ceiling, you know, at the pick eight. So I yeah. think, you know, in this range, you're going to get those types of picks. Um, I've had trouble taking them, David, and you can let me know what you think. But I've almost skipped this entire tier. If I don't get one of these guys up here, I've kind of skipped all of them and gone all the way down to the Dak Prescott range, uh, Kirk Cousins, uh, Geno Smith, Aaron Rodgers. These are some of the guys. I get a lot of Derek Carr this year. I think he's easy to stack. Um, Dak, I find myself trying to draft a lot of. I mean, he's a couple years removed from 330 point season. Uh, I think he's got, you know, 4,500 yards and 40 touchdown upside. This offense honestly could be uh, a much better version that we've seen in years past with Zeke. Uh, just not playing a role there this year. He's gonzo. So we've got a you know much faster pace looking offense potentially out there in Dallas. And everyone's healthy coming back for the first time in years. Even Michael Gallup is coming in healthy. So I, uh, I really like Dak Prescott all the way down here. He's being drafted as QB 12 on underdog fantasy. So are you drafting this mid, mid we'll call it, I guess, mid tier. You know, this, this is QB 8 through 11 with Lawrence, Watson, uh Tung Vailoa and Richardson. Um, so I will draft the new goat, Alien Anthony Richardson. Uh, a okay. little bit of a homer pick, but I do think that potential is there. Again, we're talking yeah. best ball. We're talking best case scenario. We're talking a guy that can go nuclear. And I think that Richardson, I don't think it's realistic that he'll do that this year, but I do think it's possible. I think he has the ability. Um, but yes, overall, I agree with you. I think that that middle area is a potential minefield. Um, I will say that, you know, I obviously have some shares of those guys sure. um, for reasons of like it's basically stacking purposes. It depends on who I pick in the first couple of rounds. Um, I know I've stacked Tua a little bit with like Tyree Kill or, or Jalen Waddle, um, yeah. but it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good for a guy that got like three concussions in three weeks last year yeah. and like literally was just hammered for weeks after that. I mean, even around the concussions. Great point. Yeah, if he takes a hit, I mean, not only does that hurt his yeah. season, but the entire Miami offense. I mean, there's yeah. there Tyree Kill. Is he going to be producing the way uh, he, he was with Tua last year, or is he just going to be the kind of this, uh, you know, uh, he's got to make a catch and, and break nine tackles to produce any fantasy scoring for you? I, I don't know. I, I think that's a really interesting point yeah. and one I honestly have not put too much thought into, but uh, I think I've avoided that potential landmine. Um, I see Dak Prescott here. 
right? You got him all the way up there at nine, right behind Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. You know, knowing how big of a homer you are with Anthony Richardson, when you texted me today and you're like, dude, I finished my rankings, I honestly expected Richardson to be like up here <laughs> behind my home. I wanted man. it so bad, but yeah. I thought I thought nobody would take it seriously. They would just change the page. They'd be like, all right, we're not gonna click this tab again until it's all right. So home. listen, if you're not if you're not concerned <laughs> about like people looking at you as this homer and not taking you seriously. <laughs> Would you, you know, throw caution to the wind? Where would Anthony Richardson truly be? Is he kind of where you're comfortable taking him or is he up higher? I mean, where do you see him truly going? So I would love to see him. Honestly, you know, I could I could bounce around between dropping Tua and maybe sliding Richardson right into that spot. Um, mm-hmm. That's kind of where I like him. I mean, listen, Dak hasn't done a lot to impress me. I know he has a great season, but, you know, he's been up and down his whole career. Um, I agree that their offense should be more efficient with Tony Pollard being the running back and being able to catch the ball and and make plays that way. Um, they got Brandon Cooks, so, I, you know, he's got weapons, but he's he's kind of always had weapons. So I'm um, hit or miss on Dak, but I do think the potential is there. I think he has a great offense around him. That's why, I'm, that's why I do like Dak. Um, but I think if I had to slide him up, I would replace Tua, so right between Dak and Kirk Cousins, because Anthony Richardson does have that rushing ability. I mean, the guy yeah. ran a four-four at Josh Allen size. I mean, like he's a monster, and he's going to knock people over and keep on running. So I think you always have that potential there for a big play like that. That's why I really like him. Um, I mean, their weapons are their weapons are kind of weak. I'm not a huge Michael Pittman fan. I actually think that Pierce is a better option for him. Um, but you know, I think that's where I would put him. That's probably where I'm looking at. Um, but yeah, two was one big hit away from being out. And, and I also, we didn't touch on, but, uh, Tyree kill is actually under investigation or something too, which is a little concerning. If your number one option misses any games this year too, I definitely think that hurts to stock because he's a guy that can take a slant that Tua throws off target, a seven yard slant and take it to the house, no matter if it's behind him or whatever. Whereas the next guy that steps in other than, you know, Jalen Waddle is not going to be able to do that. So, um, yeah, I can see two of potentially falling down my rankings, but I mean, you can't argue the guy has two incredible weapons that would be wide receiver ones on almost any other team in the league. So, yeah, he's a really fun one to stack yeah. with. And it's nice not to have to, you know, spend up and grab a quarterback in the first, you know, five rounds here like you have to with Justin Herbert right. and Fields and Burrow. I mean, his top seven quarterbacks, they're all going in the first five rounds. So it's nice to do the reverse and take, you know, take Waddle or take Hill and then, you know, be able to draft the quarterback later. And a lot of people won't even try to grab him because you've already taken, you know, the best value stack you can have if you grab Tyreek in the first round or if you're able to get Waddle. You know, it's just you versus one other person to draft him. You don't see that with a lot of other quarterbacks. There's some other quarterbacks here that people won't even have a stackable piece with, and they'll still grab them simply because they're the best available target. I find that there are a few quarterbacks that people just generally won't touch unless they've had a piece to stack with. Another one of those players is T-Law here, Trevor Lawrence, man. Now, the upside, everyone's so excited about. And I like him, too. I like him a lot. Uh, I just – I'm curious. I'm just curious because he's one of those guys where I've I've found that if people don't draft Kelvin Ridley early, Mm -hmm. they're not, like, drafting Trevor Lawrence just on their own, just as, like, I'm just grabbing him because he's the best quarterback available at the time. I see a lot of people, if they don't have – uh, Kelvin Ridley in that, you know, third round, they're just not drafting him. Yeah. Have you found yourself taking Trevor Lawrence uh, with Ridley? Have you found yourself taking him without? Is he somebody who, yes, you have ranked there in the eighth spot, but you just don't have much exposure to because that's how I am right now. I like him a lot. I think there's tremendous upside. I like Kelvin Ridley. He was so freaking good back in the day. And it's been a hot minute since we've seen him out yeah. there, but if he can go out there and be an alpha wide receiver, which I think he can be, Trevor Lawrence, I think, is in a great spot. But I've had trouble putting that stack together, so I haven't been drafting Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, I mean, that's – to me, he's going to live or die this season on how good Kelvin Ridley is because, I mean, Kelvin Ridley could potentially be that game-changing, that offense-changing wide yeah. receiver. If he can get back to two years ago – I mean, it's two years. That's a long time – Uh, for a skill position player to be out of the NFL. So if he can get back into game shape and be the player he was, which he's young enough, so I, you know, we have no reason to believe that he can't be, um, then I think that that really boosts Trevor Lawrence's stock. So, you know, obviously if you get Ridley, he's a great stack. I think he also has some other really good stackable pieces like Christian Kirk and uh, Evan Ingram. So, I mean, I like him for those reasons. 
you're not wrong though. It's hard to pull the trigger in these middle rounds. And and the problem is, is that when you draft Trevor Lawrence, you also have to look at, you know, who else you're, who else you're not drafting at those spots. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're missing out on other guys, other wide receivers and running backs that you probably need um, that are really enticing in those spots too. I mean, that's, yeah, that's the big a fantastic thing. Fantastic point. Yeah. So it's not only, you know, who you're getting, but it's who you're not getting by taking that quarterback there. So. Yeah, that's uh, that. That mindset is something that carries over from the DFS community. It's the opportunity cost. You know, it's yeah. like, yeah, you can take this person. Thing. This might be a phenomenal play for X, Y, and Z reasons, but you're missing out on this potential stack or this player because of ABC. And, you know, it's just the opportunity cost is just too great. And that is a, a really good thing to keep in mind because maybe the drop off from getting somebody like Trevor Lawrence versus somebody like Deshaun Watson isn't that much they might have very similar ranges so in which case you know you, you maybe you just wait you know 20 picks and you go get deshaun watson instead right. especially if you don't have kelvin ridley and i think it sounds like you are in a very similar spot where if you haven't had kelvin you've just gone ahead and just passed them up and grabbed one of these other guys that has virtually the same floor and ceiling that we both seem to uh, believe in yeah. um i want to cover a couple guys that you know, we have a lot of exposure to, or maybe we've gone out of our way to try to, you know, stack up or draft late. Um, I've got two that I'm going to highlight here, and they are both outside the top 15. Uh, I'll go ahead and name one of them real quick, give you some time to gather your thoughts if you want. But um, I've really been trying to grab Derek Carr this year. Derek Carr was, uh, you know, top five last year, I believe, in um, downfield passing. I mean, dude loves to just air it out. And even though he's not the greatest at, he's not the most efficient. Um, he's got some guys that can get down the field this year. And I really like Olave, although I've had trouble getting to him. He's been a tough one to draft. I've had a ton of exposure to Michael Thomas, who's been extremely easy to draft. I think his ADP is like 90 something, you know, Olave is going really high. It's 19.2. So you have to invest, uh, heavily here in the second round. If you want to grab him now, I have trouble doing that because I've talked with you in the past, talked about this in my previous podcast with you. I'm trying to target the best offenses this year more than anything else instead of focusing so much on the stack of just focusing like, hey, I like this Derek Carr stack, so I'm going to get all these New Orleans Saints. Well, you know what? I can get maybe a better offense uh, exposure by grabbing Devonta Smith in the same spot and then later getting Michael Thomas uh, to draft with uh, Carr in the later rounds. So that's been something I've really been trying to do because – I want to get the exposure to the best offenses like Higgins in Cincinnati, Devonta Smith in Philly, um, Jalen Waddell in Miami, and then I'm grabbing Michael Thomas late with Derek Carr, and I've been really having success putting that together. So I hope it turns out. Do you have any picks or drafts like uh, you know those later quarterbacks that you've been trying to uh, strategize with the early rounds or late round stacks? Yeah, um, I'll mention him even though he doesn't fit your criteria of being out, you know, outside of that what QB fifteen. I think I really like Gino. Um, I really like Gino because actually he surprised me when we looked up his stats from last year. Like he had a great season, great and season. I almost feel like it was kind of quiet. And he's only added. I mean, this this rookie that they added. Um, I mean, they're talking him up like he's one of the best in the class. So I really think that you know he's got great weapons around him. I think Gino should do really well. Um, another guy I would target. Um, is Matt Stafford actually coming back from injury? And the only the only way I would do that though is if we th or the only way I would continue to do that is if we think he's going to be healthy. I mean, if his elbow is truly shot, like I want nothing to do with him. But yeah. um, with people drafting Cooper Cup so high, it almost leads me to believe that that the general public thinks that he's going to be healthy because I don't think you draft um, you know Cooper Cup fourth overall if you think he doesn't have a quarterback or whoever they had playing quarterback yeah. last year. I know. What's his face stepped in for a game? Um, actually led him to a win, and now he's in Tampa Bay. Baker, Baker Mayfield stepped in for him. So I don't actually know who's their quarterback if it's not Matt Stafford. Um, but if Matt Stafford's healthy, um, I do like that because you know he has the potential. He's obviously shown us that he can that he can put up points, and he's got a great stack with Cooper Cup. Um, you know, I don't think he has a lot of other great stackable pieces. Van Jefferson's pretty easy to get late. Um, but, you know, that's another guy that I, I don't mind grabbing, and he's quite late. Him, I mean, he's in that Brock Purdy, Trey Lance area, which, you know, Trey Lance, I don't think I want anything to do with. I wouldn't mind having some Brock Purdy shares, but I guess I would say Matt Stafford is probably a guy that fits that bill. 
Speaking of, so this news blurb came out on Underdog Fantasy eight days ago. Brock Purdy's ADP has been skyrocketing ever yeah. since, just absolutely uh, shooting up the rankings. I mean, this guy was somebody you could draft in the 17th, 18th round for a while, and uh, you're not able to do that right now as people are now seeing that he remains on track. Uh, he's healthy, and it looks like he's potentially coming in uh, at atop the depth chart here. So, Brock Purdy is going to be a tough one to stack up now. You're really going to have to probably grab him a little higher in this range, and you're not able to get him down here, which was so awesome. I mean, he was a free square for a while. I think his ADP was like you know 190 or so Yeah, um, down here in the C.J. Stroud area. Uh, quarterback I'm loving right now, and it's just simply because, man, you know, you can get all of his stacking pieces so late. And this is very similar to Daniel Jones, but you're getting him – uh, 50 picks later. I mean, Daniel Jones, another guy, by the way, we just kind of glossed over, but Daniel Jones uh, going at ADP 112. When you go to the wide receiver tab and you go look at all the wide receivers for the Giants, so many of them are down here. There's like a, a slew of them in a row yeah. here. Here it is. You can you can throw dart yeah. here and grab some of these guys, and it's not hard. I mean, here's Hyatt down here, uh, Wendell Robinson, you know, Darius Slayton. Look at those ADPs. I mean, literally like yeah. they're five wide receivers are a 175 to 200. It's crazy. What do you think? What do you think of those guys? I mean, I've had a hard time, you know, I know we're not talking wide receivers, but drafting those guys and trying yeah. to sort out like who's going to be the guy and who's where and stuff. I mean, what do you think about those guys and Daniel Jones? Yeah, no, that's a great question because it kind of ties in with the quarterback I'm going to talk about here in a hot second, Jordan Love and the Green Bay Packard wide receivers. I'm not trying to figure it out. I'm throwing darts. True. You know, I'm against, you know, hundreds of thousands of lineups here. I'm going to beat one of them. I'm going to win so much money and we're going to celebrate and go back to the stream. We're going to talk about it while we're out, you know, on the golf course and you're showing me how to uh, swing a nine iron. Uh, I'm excited about these late round guys. I want to yeah. throw so many darts at the end here and really spread out my exposure. Cause in the last year and two years ago, I was way overexposed to like certain guys I fell in love with at the end of the draft. Mm -hmm. And I had, you know, talked about this with you off camera before where I had like 40% exposure to these guys who, you know, missed the first six weeks or were hurt. Um, people who are going to be in interesting spots, maybe didn't have a starting job, but I thought they could take over. I have a lot of those guys I like this year, and I'm trying to spread out my exposure. Richie James sure. is one of them I'm already talking about for the Chiefs this year, you know, fifth, potentially fifth, fourth wide receiver, um, who I'm just taking darts, uh, dart throws at, but I'm not falling in love with them. I, I'm mixing sure. it up and grabbing Robert Woods. Um, Jonathan, I think Jonathan Mechie is his, is his name, the, the second rounder who, uh, I think had cancer last year and missed out on the season. I'm grabbing some of these really late uh, wide receivers. Joshua Palmer is another one. I know we're mm. slightly going off course here. Uh, another player who we've seen, you know, produce when given an opportunity. And it's not like he's behind guys who never miss games. You know, Mike Williams and uh, Keenan Allen, these guys miss, they miss games. So I'm trying to spread out my exposure down here. Okay. And that has allowed me to really just kind of throw darts. Uh, Slayton has, I have some shares of him. Um, I have some shares of Hyatt. I have some shares of, uh, you know, Hodgin. So I'm, I'm really just mixing it up um, okay. when I have the opportunity. And I'm doing that again with the Green Bay Packers. And I'm going to just go ahead and hit the Green Bay, type in Green Bay here at the wide receiver. Uh, you'll see the wide receivers pass uh, pop up. You know, Romeo Dubs, I can get him at an ADP of 122. That's mm -hmm. insane. So, like, even if I miss Christian Watson, who I can get at the beginning of the fourth round, I can still get dubs. I can grab Love at 150. Jaden Reed at 164. Starting tight end Luke Musgrave mm -hmm. is here at 200. It's just like a really easy stack. And I do like grabbing Aaron Jones when I can because he is so efficient out of the backfield. You're able to stack up the entire Green Bay offense. It does not cost you an arm and a leg to do so. So Jordan Love has been somebody I've gotten a ton of exposure to. And I'm not even like a huge Jordan Love a, a believer or anything, but it's, you know, similar to what you said. It's, it's you know, you're able to stack up certain players at the end of the draft and it's not going to, you know, uh, it's not going to cost you a lot. And you have all these different targets that you can grab. Um, you don't have to believe in Matt Stafford's elbow you can just grab him and hope that, you know, you've got a guy who maybe even, you know, returns 280 points. It doesn't need to be somebody sure. who scores 400 points as a QB 21. And I think people forget that. I think people, you know, misunderstand what they need to do and what they need to accomplish here with their stacks. They don't need them to be their QB one. 
You know, that's that's what I'm doing up here. Maybe I've mm -hmm. already got a burrow stack. And then later I'm able in the final, you know, the rounds 12 through 17, I can put together a full Green Bay Packers stack, grab two wide receivers, a tight end, and Jordan Love with four of my six picks between 12 and 18. And that's your secondary stack, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got your QB1 stack. You hope they're QB1 for 12 out of the 17 weeks. And hopefully Jordan Love gives you, you know, three or four 30 point performances and you've got the team stacked up. I think that's something that people need to keep in mind. You're not shooting for 400 point ceilings. Of course, you want them. You want 400 point seasons, uh, but that's not the goal down here. You're trying to get somebody here who's going to be your QB2. Or if you're going in here and you're just getting funky, you know, you're, you're drafting. Uh, maybe three stacks out of this range, and then your your top ten picks. You better be on the ball with who you drafted at quarter at running back, wide receiver, and tight end, uh, because these late picks. You know, you can go Carr and Michael Thomas at you know ninety and one forty five, and then Jordan Love with some of his wide receivers in the one fifties. Um, you know, you could do the same thing with Kyler Murray and Rondell Moore and some of these other players. So uh, be smart about how you're drafting these uh, these second QB, the QB2, QB3 for your rosters um, and really try to think through why you're drafting them. Don't just draft them because you like them or you like their upside. You know, really capture that upside if you believe in them with some, with some larger stacks. Yeah. And I like those stacks. Um, I mean, you're basically the, the thought with the stacks is you're hoping that a couple of their games this season go nuclear, you know, that you're hoping they get into a shootout and you're hoping that, you know, uh, Jordan Love throws a touchdown to Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones runs in another one and he also throws one to Romeo Dobbs or whatever. And I've heard that he actually really likes Dobbs and stuff. So like little things like that, you know, like you said, like he's not he's not your quarterback or wide receiver one, either one of those guys. Um, but they're serviceable. And as long as they have that potential ceiling, which I would argue most players in the NFL are pretty good. They probably have a pretty good ceiling, but as long as they have that potential to go out and get you a one or two touchdown game every so often, even um, that's really all you're looking for, especially this late. Um, if I was to give you three players, no thinking about it, you have to choose one Kyler Murray, Daniel Jones, or Kenny Pickett. Who do you choose? Kyler Murray. Love Kyler it. Murray. Absolutely. Why? I mean, it was for the running two years. pardon for the running. For his yeah, running ability. I mean, he's yeah. two years removed from where Kyler Murray was. Um, and he, I mean, he was somebody who was a top five quarterback every single yeah. week, it, it, okay. and then he got hurt. You know, he's yeah, somebody who's going to run into injuries. Um, does he run as much this year? I don't know. I, I don't know. It remains to be seen. But I love his freaking upside at his QB twenty two. Yeah, I mean, that's crazy. I find it so bizarre that guys like Russell Wilson are going ahead of Kyler Murray. I mean, right. at this stage of Russell Wilson's career, I don't even know if he can perform anymore to a QB1 level on any given week. I mean, he did not show that last year. Kyler Murray did show that last year. He just got hurt. And yeah. He didn't look the best after that, right? And it's like, I, I don't get it entirely. I, I think he's a phenomenal target. I get why he's being drafted down here. I just don't get why some of these guys are going ahead of him. Um, yeah. I mean, I think that if you just look at those two players you mentioned, I think that Kyler Murray got hurt and then lost DeAndre Hopkins. So mm -hmm. that's the reason for the fall there. So and and Russell Wilson, I think the reason for that is purely based on the athletes he has around him. I think that's really it. I mean, I think that's what you're looking at right there. It's completely hypothetical and it's just the talent that's around them. That's the only reason I could find for that too. But yeah, like you said, like that's a huge gap. And I'll take Kyler Murray over him nine times out of 10 other than exposure or stacking purposes, really yeah. until he shows us he can do something else, you know, until Russell Wilson shows us that he's not dead. Yeah. And that's a good point. I guess when you're looking at like the, the draft uh, stack value, right. I yeah. mean, you're able to put together a decent stack with Denver, uh, you know, waiting until around nine or so to even begin it. If you really wanted to, I mean, you can get Sutton what was that math real quick math. It would be eighth round, the end of the eighth round, you can get him. So yeah, uh, I get it in that regard but even still at that point i mean aren't you can't you basically just do that with um you know someone like Derek carr who we know can sling the ball still yeah uh, you can do the same exact thing with michael thomas in the right let's look at michael thomas actually i think he's like an adp adp of 92 or so 93 there he is so you get michael thomas at 93 you can get uh car around the same spot as russell wilson you have somebody who you know can throw the football yeah. uh russell i don't know if he can stay healthy i don't know if he can throw it anymore i don't even know if he can run it anymore 
Um, I don't get that ADP. Watch him go out there and score 400 points. And, you know, uh, we live with that foot all up in my mouth right now. So, yeah, uh, you know, I think we I think we've really hammered out some good QB talk today. Uh, there's some discrepancies in our rankings for sure, but that's a good thing. You know, I'd hate to put together a draft kit for everybody. Yeah. And it's just a mirror image of one another. We have our own thoughts and opinions and strategies. I think that's going to put together a really comprehensive draft kit for people. Uh, again, you guys can grab that link down below in the description section. It's going to be totally free. It's going to be totally free. Let me show you what it looks like. Uh, you grab this link down below. You just click this. We've made it so simple right now. You just click that. It's going to open this up. Just drop your email. What we're going to do is when it's ready, we're going to email it to you. You don't even have to like go to the website or anything like that. We, you don't have to come back and find it. Um, we're going to grab your email. And when it's done, it's fully ready. And we're ready to um, you know, kind of shoot this thing live for you. Um, we're just going to give it to you. The only thing you'll need to come back to the site for if you want to use it is you'll have to come back to use the rankings, which will be interactive. You'll be able to use them in your drafts, print them out, whatever you need to do. And we're going to have a couple tools. We're making some value tools and some stacking tools that you'll be able to use for your drafts. Uh, David, anything you want to send off, uh, send people off with right now? Um, I think I'm all set, my man. I covered the draft, get here. Enjoyed my time talking about quarterbacks, but I got nothing left. Yeah, no, I think this was great. Quarterbacks are a little bit tight. You know, I mean, there's really not, you know, there's only 32 of them yeah. if we're lucky. And uh, we'll definitely dive into more positions in uh, coming episodes. But thanks for having me on. This was great. Yeah. Take care, everybody. We'll uh, see you next time. Drop a like on your way out. Drop a comment down below. And, of course, sign up for the free draft kit. Thanks. See you.